it's about to get wild in here, guys, because I'm about to give you seven signs you are a lukewarm Christian and you are on a very dangerous, dark, deadly path and you need to repent now before it's too late for you. Make sure you stick around for all seven of these signs, guys, because all seven of these are huge, massive indicators that you are lukewarm and you are living in a lukewarm Christian lifestyle. Make sure you watch all the way until number seven, the very last one, guys. I've saved the last, right, the best for last, because the last one is going to really catch you off guard. Most people don't think about this, guys, but it's a, just a massive indicator that you are living lukewarm warm and it's something the lord has revealed to me and i know he wants to reveal to you so make sure you stick around for that that's going to be at the end that's going to be number seven with that being said hey let's get straight into this one Now this is very, very scary, but most Christians are lukewarm. I hate to be real, but this is the truth. And here's what's even more scary. The Bible says lukewarm Christians will not inherit the kingdom of God. According to what Jesus says in Revelation, he actually says, I would rather you be hot or even just cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. And here's the even scarier part. Jesus is writing to people who believe in him. He's writing to believers here in Revelation. And something that God spits out, I hate to be real with you, is not something that God is going to save. So if you are a lukewarm Christian, you're heading on a dark direction straight to hell. I know, guys, it's scary, but it's truth. I'm not afraid to tell you guys the way it is and the way it's going to be. I'm here to be a, a vessel for God so that you can be saved, okay? That's why I'm making this video and this is the purpose of this video, okay? So please pay attention as I go through these things all the way through this video because it's gonna be absolutely critical for you to hear everything in here. And if any of these things apply to your life, you are gonna have the opportunity to repent, okay? So it's not too late for you, okay? Just keep that in mind. Oh, and by the way, the clip that you guys just saw, that radical clip, um, that is my Patreon Discord refinement community, my ministry on here, guys. And if you want to support me, what I'm doing on here, you can get in that. I'll pin that in the comments and leave it in the link in the description. But basically, this is a Discord. This is a community. This Patreon is a place where, let's just say, you're trying to get closer to God. Maybe you want godly friends that are going to push you in your walk with God. You need community people who are going to challenge you in your faith. Um, it's a place where if you're struggling with sin, you can be open and real and let's get you delivered. Let's get you on fire for God, guys. The purpose of this is to, the Lord gave me this whole vision not too long ago about having the biggest Christian online community in the entire world. And with those funds, I want to start building churches traveling to your places and regions in advance the kingdom of God. We're having Bible studies, weekly Zoom calls. We're having these um, deliverances. I've seen curses broken off of people. I've already seen God move in here in crazy ways, guys. So I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss out on this. You're going to want to get in, guys. It's $7.99 a month. That's $8 a month. The Lord has um, gave me this whole layout for the way he wants it to be. Recently had a friend come in and rehurbish, refurbish the entire thing. It's it's just been orchestrated by the Lord. I did not expect it to go this way, guys, but I believe God's about to do crazy things. It's called the refinement because I know when you get in, God's going to refine you, work on you, and, and should reveal to you your purpose, your calling, your anointing, and get you on the right track of your life. So if you want to get in, again, it's in the link in the description. I will pin it in the comments. And yeah, you're just going to have a whole family of believers and community um, that are going to push you in your walk with God, as well as you get to know me personally. But with that being said, guys, hey, let's get in to number one here, okay? So number one sign that you are a lukewarm Christian is going to be, of course, you have worldly desires. Oof, this is a, this is a major one, guys. Now, the Bible, the Bible says inside of James 4, I believe, verse 4, 
It says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of this world makes himself an enemy of God's. This is James writing to believers here, right? So James is saying that inside of the Bible, and this is the Lord, this is his word, he's saying that when you are friends with the world, you're living your life according to the sway of the devil, the sway of the world. You've got these worldly desires and tendencies, okay? Then you're an enemy of God's. You're on the wrong side, friend, because the entire world is under the sway of the devil. So when you love the things of this world, I'm going to give you another verse that proves exactly what I'm saying right now. It says in 1 John 2, 15, do not love the world or the things of this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of God is not in them. So if you love the world and the things of the world, the love of God is literally not in you. That's a very dangerous place to be. So if you have worldly desires, you're listening to all this worldly garbage music, you're playing worldly video games, watching worldly shows, you're entertaining yourself with what God despises, you're looking at things that is bringing darkness into your life, okay? And you love it, you love these things of this world, there's a good chance that's a sign that's an indicator that you're a lukewarm Christian. Now the second sign, the major indicator, one of the major indicators that you are a lukewarm Christian is going to be your prayer life is dead. Okay, your prayer life is dead. And I'm going to show you why this is the most important part of your life. The Bible says inside of the book of John, the gospel of John, Jesus said, this is eternal life that they know you, the one true God in Christ whom you sent. And how can you know a God you don't talk to, a God that you're not in prayer with, right? How can you know somebody unless you have a relationship with them? A lot of you guys have a dead prayer life where it's just your you know, five minute repetitive rain repetition type prayers where you know you spend like a little bit of time with God just to get it over with, but you don't actually you know pour your heart out before God. You're not actually seeking him because you love him, right? This is called, this is called a dead prayer life. And the Bible says, many will come to me in my name saying, Lord, Lord, do we not cast out demons in your name, prophesy in your name, do all these wonders and works in your name. He said to them, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. Indicating that these people did works for God, but they skipped out on the most important part of being a Christian, having a relationship with God. And if you have no prayer life, and your prayer life is dead, it's not you know the most important part of your life where you're setting aside time purposefully, a lot of time to spend time with God. You're you're seeking him, you're not, you know, you're you're just being real with him, genuine, you're not talking to him like a wall, you're talking actually like a person, you're pouring out your heart before him. That if you are not living up to that and your prayer life is dead, then yes, it's a very good sign that you are a lukewarm Christian because only those who know him, only those who know the Father, those who have a real genuine relationship with him will be saved. Prayer is not a work, it's the most important part of your journey with Christ, your journey with God, right? Because another thing is faith without love, the Bible says, is nothing. And you can't have love unless you know him, right? You, you gotta fall in love with him through prayer, through seeking him, through pouring out your heart for him. So it's super critical to have a genuine, powerful, real prayer life where you are drawing near to God and God is drawing near to you. Now the third sign that you are a lukewarm Christian is going to be you don't evangelize, okay? So many people miss this step, guys, because they don't understand the Bible and they don't understand how Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And one of Jesus's commandments was a part of that great commission, go and preach the gospel, go preach the gospel to every creature. Now I myself have not been perfect in this category. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. However, if you purposefully avoid preaching the gospel, you are not evangelizing, you're not actively as a Christian trying to evangelize and tell other people about the about Jesus, yes, it's a very good sign and indicator that you are lukewarm. God, God, excuse me, God has commanded us to preach the gospel. If we don't preach the gospel, we are a hindrance in the kingdom of God advancing. The Bible says, the laborers are few. And here's another issue. There's a lot of laborers in the kingdom that don't labor, okay? We're not actually planting seeds. We're not actually watering them. We're just living our Christian life, our nine to five. We don't care about the people around us in our lives. We should be evangelizing. We should be telling people about Jesus, not just the missionaries, not just the evangelists. God has called every single one of us 
to evangelize, to preach the gospel, to prepare the way for his return. So we are called to preach the gospel. If you don't know the Bible, that's, that's probably why, because the Bible makes this very clear that we are commanded. It's not just you know something that it, you should do. It's something we're commanded to do. We're all called to preach the gospel. And if you don't desire to preach the gospel, you're not preaching the gospel. It shows, number one, you're ashamed of the gospel. Number two, you're letting fear be your Lord. And then number three, you don't have love in your heart for the people that God has love for. So you must start preaching the gospel. It's going to be a critical step when it comes to you becoming a new creation, doing the work of God. And it's a sign if you're not preaching the gospel that you're lukewarm. Now, the fourth sign that you are a lukewarm Christian is going to be you don't produce fruit. A lot of people are going to call me heretical for this. I don't care. Try calling Jesus heretical after he said what he says right here inside of Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. Jesus says this, okay? Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So in other words, Jesus says, if you don't produce good fruit, you're going to hell. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit. When Jesus talks about fruits, he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. You should be producing the fruits of the Spirit. And if you're not producing the fruits of the Spirit, you're not operating in those you know, I believe nine things, and there's a good chance <laughs> you're definitely a lukewarm Christian. In fact, it might even reveal that you don't have the Holy Spirit. Listen, the gifts of the Spirit are not the biggest indicator that you have the Holy Spirit. It's going to be the fruit of the Spirit, okay? The fruit. Satan can mimic the gifts. What Satan can't mimic is the fruit, okay? Satan can't operate in true love, true faith, um, true self-control. He can't, okay? Because he, he's nothing but wicked. But as a Christian... We should be producing these fruits being children of God because these are reflections, the fruit are reflections that we are walking in the character of who God is, the God that we serve. So if we are not producing the fruits of the Spirit, it shows that we are not living a lifestyle according to the way God has commanded us to and called us to in the Bible. We're not reflecting God, we're reflecting the world, we're reflecting the way of the devil if we're not producing the fruits of the Spirit. So if you're not living in the fruits of the spirit especially love especially love because love is the most important out of all of these love is the beginning that is going to be the root of all of these if you're not you know producing the fruits you're not producing love yes you're going to fall into that category of being a lukewarm christian number five is going to be the people in your life don't know you're a christian <clears throat> this is a major one guys it reveals that you're not living in godly character. There's not something different about you that you are reflecting to others. And of course, it reveals that you're not walking in the spirit because if you are a Christian, somebody who genuinely loves God, right? Somebody who is seeking him, somebody who is walking in the spirit in his character, then you would be a light to the world. You become someone, when somebody hangs around you, they're like, oh my gosh, this guy is different. There is something totally different and distinct about this guy. I can't wrap my finger around it, but there's just something different and I want that. Okay, so when you go to places, when you're at work or you're at your school and you decide to put your lamp over your light, that's an issue. The Bible says, no matter where you are, you're supposed to be godly. You're supposed to live like Jesus. You're supposed to produce the fruit of the Spirit. There should be something different about you. You should be a light. You don't put the lamp over your light. You don't hide it sometimes, okay? You don't hide it at work. You don't hide it at school. You don't hide it when you're at the grocery store. You don't hide it when you're th at this place or that place or with your ungodly extended family. No, you always keep that fire burning. You always keep that light shining. So people should see that there is a light upon you there is a light within you there's something different about you and if there's and if people can't wrap if people just see you as just another part of the world as someone that fits in that looks like the world maybe you're cussing and swearing and you're acting like the world and you're you, then you're falsely representing who jesus is and that's basically the very definition of a lukewarm christian is being a false representative of jesus he can't stand this because when people are falsely representing who he is they are insulting 
his image and they're instead leading people away from God instead of to God. All right, guys, bear with me. We're almost on the one you've been waiting for, number seven, but before number seven, let's do number six. Number six is going to be you're practicing sin. Okay, this is a huge indicator that you're lukewarm Christian. I'm gonna show you why. The Bible says right here inside of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? Now, there's a lot of people that would tell you this is not talking about sin. This is talking about the practice of the Levitical law and how God is saying that you're supposed to detach from the 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 belief that your works in the Levitical law will save you and you need to be sanctified in Jesus and have faith in Jesus and that his blood will save you. However, this does not indicate to me at all. I've read this many times. I've done a lot of research on this one, guys. This reveals to me this nowhere does it say that it's talking about the Levitical law. Yes, it talks about the Levitical law early in the chapter, but then it goes on to a different topic and then it goes over to here. So this is something Paul is completely addressing that is separated from what he was talking about earlier. OK, he is talking about sin here, willful sin. OK, he's saying if you continue to willfully sin against God, you practice that sin, you're living in that sin, you're OK with using Jesus as a ticket rather than making him your target, right? Then you're headed to hell. It's a dangerous place to be. And I don't know if Paul is the author of Hebrews, to be honest, guys. I just, it seems like Paul, but it could be Paul, it could be Luke. None of us, it could be anyone. None of us completely know for sure. But what the author is saying here is that if you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, right? There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. And willful sin is not just you making a mistake, right? Because we know from the Bible, there's three different ty types of sins. There's, there's, there's just normal sin, iniquity, and transgression. I believe iniquity is the one that he's addressing here where you are practicing that sin, you're okay with that sin, and you are going against God purposefully, okay? Even knowing the truth. So this is very dangerous. If you guys are living in a lifestyle of practicing sin, you need to repent now before it is too late for you. If you live in your sin, you're gonna die in that sin. And then finally here, guys, we got number seven, the one you've all been waiting for. You ready for this? Your social media pages don't reflect God. This is a major one, but it says a lot about you. I know social media is not talked about in the Bible, but here's what the Bible does say. It says whoever confesses Jesus, right, before men, him, Jesus will confess before the Father. But whoever denies Jesus before men, him also Jesus would deny before the Father. Now, your social media page plays a big role in your public life, your public faith in who you are as a Christian. I don't care what you say. People are going to look at your social media page and judge you based upon your social media page if you are somebody who's actually living up to who you say you are and you're walking the character of God. I'm not just talking about a little Instagram verse inside of your, you know, a little verse inside of your Instagram bio, but then the rest of your page is immodest, terrible stuff that reflects Satan, not God. It's all about you. It's all about you looking good, you looking cute, you looking hot, you looking this way, right? You're good at this. You're good at that. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Look, this is wicked. God is sick of people using their social media page as a place to bring people to them rather than bring people to Jesus, okay? So that's why I do what I do here on social media. I post about Jesus and we should all be posting about Jesus. I'm not saying you gotta be a full-time influencer, but your social media page should reflect Jesus, not you. It should not be about you, yourself, your cute pictures, you, the, the, the times where you think you look so good, so attractive, so hot. It's not bad to post a good picture of you every once in a while with a family member or whatever, something like that. But the majority of your social media page should be to bring people to Jesus. You have the opportunity to cast a net. So if you are using your social media page to bring people to you, there's a heart issue and God will judge your heart, okay? On the day of judgment, I'm telling you, God will be like, look, here's something that you could have done for me that you didn't. Here's something, you could have casted a net saving thousands of people through one video. Why wouldn't you? Like, why wouldn't you? You see what I'm saying? So why 
is it that our social media pages are all about us, right? Our sin, our this, our that. They need to start being way more about Jesus. We need to use our social media as a place, a tool to reflect Jesus. It is a part of your open life. I hate to be real. A lot of you are just like, because it's not inside the Bible, it's not of God, right? But there's a principle inside of the Bible that talks about how everything you should do, you should do for the glory of God. Whether you eat, sleep, or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. It talks about holiness. Be holy in all your conduct. That's everything you do, including your social media. Okay, so use your social media to bring God glory. That being said, guys, hey, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out my merch store. I'll leave that in the link in the description. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments about this one. With all that being said, guys, don't if you wanna support the ministry again, you can join the Patreon again. If you're trying to get closer to God, this is a major step for you. I believe it will help you to overcome these lukewarm addictions and habits in your life, especially if you feel like some of these lukewarm things apply to you in your life. Hey, get in get in. I can't wait to see you on the inside and get to know you better, friend, and grow with you with God. So yeah, that being said, hey, God bless you guys and peace be with you all.